So you want to be a game developer. You wake up one day and decide you're ready to start your own journey as an indie game developer. You go online, you start searching for info on where to start. And suddenly, you are surrounded by dozens upon dozens of videos, articles, guides, Reddit posts with pessimistic people telling you to run the other way. It's a nightmare. Truth is, this is the reality for most people trying to make their way into the game industry. It is difficult, but the good news is, it isn't impossible. You see, I also started making games without even knowing how to code. The only thing I had was an idea for a game, and that idea led me in a path of research and learning. It wasn't always easy, but I'm here to tell you it is possible. And in this video, I want to help you ease your first steps a little bit, help you hit the ground running, and tell you exactly where to begin if you want to be an indie game developer. So if you were already feeling anxious for the amount of disorganized info you found online about this topic, you can now relax because my friend, you are already in the right place. Let's begin. Step 1. Pick your engine. Game development is no longer limited to programmers. When Shigeru Miyamoto created Mario, he had to draw the level's layout on paper and wait for programmers to bring his ideas to life. That is no longer the case. Today, we have tools called game engines that simplify the process a lot, to the point that almost anybody can use them. There are different game engines. Some are more robust than others. Some are paid, some are free, some require coding, and some of them use a visual environment that you can use without learning any programming language. The most popular engines are Unity, Unreal Engine, Godot, Phaser, Game Maker, and Construct 3. You can use all of them for free, but Unity and Unreal have limitations on how much you can do before they start asking for your money. Godot is completely free, so it isn't as widely supported as the other two. Construct 3 the engine I use is perfect for beginners. Construct 3 is a visual engine, which means you don't need to learn how to code in order to make games. It's very easy to use, but these benefits come at a price. You can use a very limited free version of Construct, but if you want to unlock its full potential, you will need to pay a subscription. My advice is pick the engines that best suit your profile and background and get as good as possible with it before trying a different one. If you are a programmer, go with Unity. If you are a designer or have a different background, go with Construct. Step 2. Download Assets So, games basically have two components, the code and the graphics. The game engine will manage the code, but the graphics, you have to deal with that yourself. The good news is, that you don't need great graphics to make a good game. Look at Undertale or Thomas Was Alone, some of the best indie games ever made, and have very simplistic graphics, although their style is impeccable. If you are a graphic designer or an artist, you already have this part covered. You can create your art in any software you are familiar with, like Photoshop, Illustrator, or even Paint, and then bring your assets to the engine you pick. I use Inkscape a free alternative to Illustrator that also uses virtual graphics. If you want to make pixel art, you can use a Sprite or Piscal or even Photoshop. But if you're not an artist, don't worry, there are plenty of game assets online you can use in your games, especially if you are just starting. You can go to the Unity Asset Store, itch.io, Pixabay, Freepik, all these sites have big collection of assets ready to use. Some of them are paid, but some of them can be downloaded for free. You can find everything from characters to items to backgrounds, pixel art, vector, even 3D. Basically any asset you need to start making your first game can be found online. So when you have an idea, download some assets that suit your style and start creating. Step 3. Keep it small. Now that you have your engine and your assets, it's time to start learning and creating your first game. Most of us 
start by making a simple game for a tutorial. You can find a ton of detailed tutorials on YouTube about making specific games on Unity or Construct. Alternatively, if you are using Construct, you can download one of the many examples that come with the engine and follow the instructions. I would suggest finding a good tutorial online, one that goes step by step. You can also find a good online course that guides you through the basic, although there are so many good courses out there. Most of them had good intentions, but lack the necessary pedagogical expertise to make sure what they are teaching is easy to understand. I'm in the process of creating my own online course to teach people how to use Construct Treat in a detailed and effective way. But in the meantime, I would say look for a tutorial online and follow the steps as close as possible. Game design with Riley has some good ones. The important thing during this step is that you keep your ideas in check. Keep it small. Most aspiring in the game developers quit during this phase because they want to build the next Skyrim or the next Fortnite. And sorry, but that's not possible. The first game from most of us was pretty bad, and that's okay, because your first game isn't supposed to be a bestseller, it's supposed to help you learn. So start small, like Flappy Bird Small. If you are thinking of making Angry Birds, that's too big, go small. Keep your ideas in check. Even for your second and third game, keep them small, and you'll have more chances of success. Step 4. Don't be afraid to fail. One of the videos that made an impact on me during my early career was a video from Extra Credit that was called Fail Faster. They kept selling this idea that failing is a good thing and you should fail as fast as possible. At first, I thought this sounded crazy, but the more I learned, the more I understood what they meant. You see, failing is part of the process when you are learning a new skill. Failing is only a bad thing if you don't learn from it. Every time you fail, you are a little bit closer to your goal because failing is an opportunity to look back, understand what you did wrong and do it a little better next time. That's learning. That's how you get better. So don't be afraid of starting a new game even if you don't know exactly what you're doing because if you fail, you will learn and you'll do it better next time. Step 5. Share your creation. Once you are up and running and you start creating your own games, feel free to share them online. This game day community is usually very nice. Nobody will be rude to you. If you say, hey, this is my first game, people will give you advice, encourage you, and listening to what players say will contribute to your overall learning curve. It is important to put your game in players' hands as soon as possible. Because as weird as it sounds, when you start creating a game, you might kinda of lose the ability to judge your own games objectively. Listening to what players think about your game is the best way to make it better. There are several places where you can share your games online. I would recommend creating an itch.io account. Itch is the main place to share amateur games. It is free and it has a lot of players looking for new games to try. You can create an account on itch.io in a few minutes and then upload your games super quick too. Having your game online is a great way to share it to the world. And the best part of a site like each is that it lets you customize your game page, so it has more info about your games, screenshots, videos, you name it. You'll get a ton of feedback that way, and when you are ready to take it to the next step, you can join one of the many game jams hosts on each, where you'll get even more players and put your newly developed skill to the test. Step 6. Ask around. When you start using your game engine of choice, chances are you'll find yourself stuck one way or another. Sometimes you have an idea but don't know how to implement it. Or you can encounter a weird bug you don't know how to fix. When this happens, feel free to ask around in the forums. Every engine has a dedicated community that is usually super helpful and can get you unstuck pretty fast. Just make sure you Google your issue before starting a new thread about it. There's a big chance someone else had the same issue before and already asked. These interactions are very easy to find online and will save you time. So if you want to make your character double jump but don't know how to do it, go ahead and type how to double jump in Construct 3 and I guarantee 90% of the time Google will give you the answer.
Step 7. Indie or Employee At this point, you are no longer an aspiring game developer and became a hobbyist. You already have an agent, you created or downloaded your asset, you have an account on itch.io to share your creation and you have joined the community. Now, it is time to make a big decision before you start making your dream game. Do you want to be an indie developer or do you want to find work at a big studio? This decision is entirely up to you. Both paths have their pros and cons and will depend entirely on what kind of game you want to make. If you are a creative person, if you have your vision of what games you want to make and want to have full control over your creative process, go indie. You already have the creative skills to do it. Now, you need to learn about the business, how to market your game, how to contact publishers. You can learn this along the way, and I actually talk about that on one of my other videos. But if you don't mind working on someone else's idea, if you want to work on bigger productions, and maybe have your name credited on a big AAA title, then start building your portfolio and look for job offers in the big leagues. This is a difficult path, but just as valid as being an indie. Just know that the game industry is very unstable, and sometimes jobs like this in big studios aren't as reliable or stable as being your own boss. No matter what path you choose, I hope this video was helpful on getting you started. I hope you feel more comfortable now on what to do and where to start. If you have it more clear now, consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Now go pick an engine and make sure to join our Discord server where you can share your first game with other people who are also starting. Let's help each other grow and become the next wave of indie game developers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!